Good evening, good evening, good evening. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on into the room. Invite some followers with you. Come on. This is a little different for me today, being on a Sunday, but I tell you, I have to be obedient to what the Lord has said, so therefore, I am following protocol this evening. Amen. Glory to God. Come on into the room. Come on and let the Holy Spirit lead you and guide you into all truth and all righteousness. I tell you, he has placed the word in my belly and I'm going to go forth and I'm going to do and be and get it out as he see fit, as he deems. Because I understand that the life I live, it's not my own glory to God. It is not my own. I'm just a vessel that he wants to use. So I just want him to do what he wants to do. I tell you, glory to God. Amen, amen, amen. I tell you, just come on in and invite, invite, invite. I tell you, I tell you, I tell you, this is a good day to be alive. I'm telling you, some people today haven't woke up, won't wake up, but I'm telling you, this here is the day that the Lord have made I shall and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Glory to God. So I am excited about this evening. I'm excited how the Lord has woken me up and started me on my way in the name of Jesus. And most importantly, that the gates of hell will not and shall not prevail upon me. Glory to God. Amen. So Father, we just going to begin to pray and those that will come on and come forth, they're going to just let them bring their Bibles and let them jump in, let them catch in and let them fit in where they belong. Hallelujah. So, Father, we just come before you this evening you just to say thank you. Amen. 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 Glory to your name, O oh God. Thank you for thank what you, you are, are doing. Amen. The recording has started. Amen. Father, we just want to come before you this evening to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for what you are doing. For this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it, oh God. Father, we thank you that no matter what's taking place in this world and what's going on around the world, Lord God, it did not take you by surprise, oh God. But Father, this evening, you want to bring to your sons and your daughters words of encouragement, oh God. Because, Lord God, we know that the this world is angry. And because this world is angry, Lord God, you know there's a plan and a purpose that you have for your children, that the gates of hell will not and shall not prevail upon them in the name of Jesus. And Lord God, I just want to say thank you, Lord God. Thank you because I know that the earth is the Lord's in the fullness thereof and all they that dwell therein it, oh God. This earth belongs to you in the name of Jesus. Good evening. I hope to see you on Tuesday. We have not canceled Tuesday at all. So girlfriend, you come on and we're going to have ourselves a good time going Tuesday morning. Praise God. Amen. And I just want to get started this evening. I just want you to know that I'm normally here on Tuesday mornings at 11 a.m. But Tuesday mornings, I will have another assignment elsewhere. And the Lord told me to come on. He told me this morning to come on this evening. So I thank the Lord for being able to follow his instructions and being able to do what he would have me to do. Because I mean, every time you turn on the news and you turn on the TV, they're talking about this coronavirus. And the thing is, it's funny right now that I can even remember the word Corona because every time I think about the Corona, wow, it's just like Corona, that reminds me of something. It reminds me of the day was I used to drink Corona beer and Corona beer wasn't a cheap beer. It was a beer that many people couldn't afford back then. But praise God, I don't have need of beer anymore. Glory to God. But before I get started, you know, um, since last year, I've been talking about Save the Date because there's a conference coming up. It's called Gutsy. And Gutsy is called God Understands the Trial Strengthens You. And I know I had a date for the deposits, but it's time to not just pay your deposit, but begin to pay on your rooms. I'm telling you, the people are afraid of the car. 
the coronavirus. But see, I know Psalms 91. And see, also the coronavirus, uh, from my understanding, it doesn't fare well in heat. So we're talking about down the line, we're talking about May. So therefore, don't say, well, maybe, maybe not. No, God has ordained this thing. And because it's God ordained, Corona by that time will probably be a figment of our imaginations. And the only thing we're going to be able to do when May come, we're going to say, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, I thank Thank you that you kept me through all this madness because that's what I see it as. I see it as madness because people are running into the stores and they're grabbing all the tissue paper, all the toilet paper, all the hand sanitizer. And they're grabbing all this stuff and they're becoming hoarders and don't even understand what they're doing. And so the thing about it is God never told us to hoard anything. He always just told us to believe. And he said, if you just have the faith of a grain of a mustard seed that you can Take that mustard seed and you can grow your faith. So this here is the time when we need to increase and grow our faith. So it's not the time to buy all the toilet paper, buy all the hand sanitizer, because if you buy it all and it's all in your house, guess what? Your neighbor isn't going to have any. So then when you go to say, how you doing, neighbor? Well, you know, it would be nice to have some toilet paper, but you got all the toilet paper. You got all the hand sanitizer. If you're going to do anything with it, spread it out. Be a blessing to somebody. Be a delightsome land to somebody. But most importantly, leave some in the store for the people. That's the 911 emergency. Last year, I want to say it was in the month of November. When the Lord told me already the um, 911, what's your emergency? He had already gave me the title for 2020. And when he gave it to me, I got excited, not knowing that we were going to have an actual emergency. And so when he gave it to me, it came out of the book of James. But I haven't done much in the book of James because there's so much that's going on in the world that the Holy Spirit wants us to Take the devil and squash him and have him to be the bug in the rug because, see, he's running rampant. And because he's running rampant, people's minds are running as rampant as the enemy is. And the Bible says that when the enemy comes in like a flood, that God sets up the standard. But people are still trying to do things on their own. But we got to learn how to trust God. If you say that you are a believer, well, guess what? Just believe God. God has given us 66 books of the Bible for us to go through if we need encouragement, if we need love, if we need anything. And it's also like, if you don't believe, Lord God, help my unbelief. Ask him for the wisdom that you may need for such a time as this. Well, Lord, I'm scared. Give him your truth. And when you give him your truth, sit back, listen, and wait for him to give you his truth. Praise God. But here it is, we're born again believers and we are to the point where we cannot no longer be carnal-minded Christians. They the ones that go to church and they, hey, praise the Lord, hallelujah, and they still sometimes live in this tradition and they still live in religion or what my mama did, what my daddy did, what my mama said, what my daddy said. And the Bible says we cannot get into these old wise fables. And so, you know, a lot of people hold on to that stuff. And I thank God that my mother never had those things. So I couldn't tell you what the old folks used to say because I did not get that from my mother. And my mother did not get that from her mother. So my mother told us what was valuable, what was morals for us, but never said, well, you know, the old folks said this. I don't know what the old folks said, y'all. I don't know, so I'm not even going to try to tell you. So carnal-minded Christians, they're fleshly, they're worldly, and they're earthly. And so therefore, it's just like that little dab, but do you, you know, sometimes, you know, I, I, um... Sometimes you may go to somewhere and you get some butter or something on your toast or maybe on your potato. You don't want much because you're trying to refrain from some things. So all you want is just a little dab or just a little dollop on it, you know. And so therefore you get just enough to have that little taste. And that's how some people are in the churches today. Just enough to have that little taste. Just enough to say, I've been there, done that. Got my, you know, got my little, uh, my little Christian card for the day. God don't care about your Christian 
wearing, God. God doesn't care about what you're wearing today. But see, this evening, I want to talk to the believer. Those who love the Lord thy God with all their heart, their mind, their soul, and their strength. I want to talk to that carnal-minded person, that carnal-minded Christian, the one who's fleshly, who's worldly, and who's earthly. I want to talk this evening to that backslider because, see, God is also married to the backslider because he said he would never leave us or forsake us. He's married to you and I. If you walk away from him, guess what? He's still married to you. He still loves you. So don't go so far off course that you say, well, you know, I'm just done so much, you know, till God just don't love me. God just doesn't want me. No, if he's still married to you, that means he wants you to come back home. Come back home. And that's what he wants us to do. Come back to him. He said, if we draw nigh to him, we will draw nigh to us. But a lot of times we're walking so far away from him, we can't see him. And truly, we cannot see him. It says, because see, my sheep hear my voice, know my voice, and a stranger they won't follow. But we have followed so much of this false gods, so much of this religion, and so many false doctrines. We don't even know the real thing if it was sitting in our our faces and so therefore God wants us to get back to the real deal get back to where we used to be when we first received the Christ and our safe you know as our personal Savior get back to what you know you supposed to do and so therefore I have been praying for a very long time for revival and that's what we need to do we need a revival in the land we need a healing in the land we need to be restored and see, that's what people don't understand, restoration. People will throw you under the bus, get rid of you before they want to restore. But God wants to restore relationships. If he can restore the relationship, restore the brokenness, then guess what? We can be restored back to him. But see, we can't do a partiality and not do everything because, see, that's still not right. So therefore, revival is a new birth. It's a resuscitation. You know when somebody dies and they call 911. Before they die, all of a sudden somebody may be there. And they may be performing CPR. And they're pressing and they're pressing and they're pressing. And that's what God is doing. He is pressing upon us to come back to him. And that's what he's doing. He wants to recover everything that the canker and the locust and the palmer worm have stolen out of our lives. But... He needs a body to work with. He needs us to say, come on. He needs us to say, you know what, God? I know that I need you. God, I love you with such an everlasting love. Lord, I know that without you, I can do nothing, but I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. So God wants us to bench press and get those spiritual muscles. He wants us to tune and turn back to him. And when we tune and turn back to him, not just as a person, but as a nation, things begin to to happen because the Bible says if one can chase a thousand, two can chase ten thousand. That means when we come together, we strengthen one another, and that's what we got to do. We got to learn how to strengthen each other. How you doing, Sister Shay Shaw? Praise God for the first time is up on here. Hey, Amen. Go invite somebody, bring somebody with you. God is trying, God is up to something. He said that we will have life and we will have life more abundantly. He didn't tell us that we would have toilet paper, we would have Germex, and we would have all the Lysol and that stuff. He didn't say that, but he wants us to have an abundant life because he said, Beloved, I pray that you be in health. And that you prosper even as your soul shall prosper. Once your soul shall prosper, guess what? All the things of the world, it's not going to bother you. Yes, it's out there. Yes, it's happening. But you're not going to look at the TV and like, oh my God, what am I going to do? No, you're not going to have that reaction. You're going to be like, Lord, in the name of Jesus, this thing will pass over and it will not come not my dwelling. You're going to get to the point where you don't know what to do. You're just going to begin to call call on the name of Jesus. When you don't know what else to do, you're just going to get to the point. It's like, wait a minute. Hold on, devil. You think this is what you're going to do? But I'm going to stop you right now in the name of Jesus. That's right, because my word tells me in Psalms 91, this is what happens when I call on the name of Jesus. This is what happens when I make Jesus the Lord of my life. 
This is what happens when I love the Lord my God with all my heart, my soul, and my strength. This is what happens when the presence of Almighty God is upon me. This is the same thing that happened for the children of Israel. When the children of Israel was out there, they took and the, the Lord told them, put the blood over your doorpost. And when the death angel come by, guess what? It's not coming out your dwelling. When the death angel come by, you don't have to worry about your sons and your daughters. When we get back to where we first started believing we can go to the point where the death angel want to come with what's that thing see coronavirus when it want to come in your area come <laughs> you don't have to worry about <laughs> oh then all of a sudden they want to touch you you don't have oh no, no 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 we don't have to do that because god will put up a hedge of protection yes he says so Guard yourself, but he didn't tell you to go around wearing the mask and all the, the gear and all this stuff. No, if you got some respiratory going on, stay at home. It's just that simple. Stay at home if you got respiratory going on. Because if you got respiratory going on and you start coughing and sneezing all over the place, you ain't going to just put up a sign. Oh, I don't have the coronavirus. The con see, the, see, I can't even say. I don't have the coronavirus, y'all. Ain't nobody going to believe you. But if you're sick, my husband called me and he told me, he said, you know, I got back home and they told, I saw on the news that if you're 65 and older, stay home. Earlier it was, if you're 70 and older, stay home. So here it is, the numbers are going further and further down. Because see, a lot of people, their immune system isn't up. But the thing about it is, it's like this. If your immune system isn't up, if you don't take vitamins, now I take vitamins every day. My husband got me started on vitamins early in the marriage. So I got 30 some odd years of vitamins stored up in here. And I take my vitamins daily. I'm on the B, I'm on the uh, multi, I'm on the, the, the cleanser. I'm on all these things. And also I'm a um, personal health coach, but that's not neither here or there right now. But the here it is, if you need your immune system strengthened and you need yourself strengthened, go to um, Psalms 91. Psalms 91 and make that thing personal. I make it personal. Deborah who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. Put your name there. You who dwell in the uh, place of the most high you shall abide under the shadow it's a shadow y'all you know some people even are scared of their shadow oh my gosh let me tell you something and i'm gonna get back to this i love to look at my shadow because when i look at my shadow my shadow show me something that i'm not and that's what the lord told us call those things that be not as though you were when i look at my shadow i look like i'm about six or seven feet tall i'm tall and i'm long and i'm lean but all of a sudden when i get back to my reality i'm not even five foot five y'all and all the tall and lean all that stuff is gone but the shadow the shadow the shadow is a thing that a lot of people are afraid of they're afraid of the shadow but it says here it is you shall abide under the shadow of the almighty it didn't Say the shadow of darkness because see that's what the devil is he is darkness it says under the shadow of the almighty abide under god when we abide under god deborah will say of the lord he is my refuge and my fortress when you think about that fortress you're thinking about something that's covering over you that's hovering you and that fortress becomes so tight that nobody's gonna come up in that thing so that's what god wants to be he wanted to be where you're gonna have your word they're going to have your life so tight with him. You don't have to worry about the devil coming in to kill, steal, and destroy. It's time that we get ourselves right. My God. My God, in him do I trust. I'm not trusting in the Xanax. I'm not trusting in the ibuprofen. I'm not trusting in the whatever it is that everybody's out there buying or they're needing. I'm putting my trust in God. God wants us to put our trust in him. Look towards the hills from whence cometh your help, knowing that your help cometh from the Lord. The Lord who made heaven and earth. God know where I am right now like he know where you are. But we got to put our trust in him. We cannot say, well, I, I don't know. No, you got to know who he is for yourself. You got
got to know who he is. If you got children, you got to know who he is for your sons and your daughters, your grandchildren, your husband or your wife. We got to know because see, if your sons and your daughters, if they don't know the Lord and the pardon of their sins, we got to know how to pray for them. Pray them that they come out of the world, that they then come into the things of the Lord. And when they come into the things of the Lord, then they can begin to pray for their children. They begin to pray for their friends. They begin to pray for their family. And that's how this thing should be. It should be just like a wildfire. Because when I think about a wildfire, I think about something that cannot be contained. And when there's wildfires, people come from all over the country to help that state put out the wildfire and they come in a fire truck they come with a helicopter they come with any kind of way that they can find some water and when water gets low on the hydrants then they go with the helicopters they go down they get the big old humongous buckets they go back to the water i mean to the woods and they begin to dump and see that's how god wants us to do he wants us to go down up under him and when we get up under him because we are submerged in the anointing of the holy spirit of almighty god once once we get submerged, he's going to dump the Holy Spirit down within us. It's going to begin to resonate in us. All fear will begin to get gone because as the Holy Spirit dwells in us richly, we're going to understand the perfect, that perfect, that perfect love that comes only from the Lord himself. It has no fear. And see, perfect love is where we're going because perfect love is not going to fear. It's not to say it's not out there. Yes, it is out there. Yes, it is real, but I'm not going to be scared of everybody that I come in contact with. I'm not going to say, no, uh -uh, no, 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 I'm not going to barricade myself in the house because that's what they say. But when you know you who you are, guess what? It ought to be all right because at the end of the day, God already know my end to my beginning. He knows everything about you and I. He knows the day we going to sit down and he knows the day we going to close our eyes. So it do not have to be just because there's a virus out there. Anything can take us out, but when you abide under the shadow of the almighty glory to God, guess what? I say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. In my God, I trust. I'm telling you, I trust an almighty God. They say that even on the money, in God we trust. Guess what? They Some folk just need to take their money, put it on their forehead, and have a constant reminder. In God we trust. In God I trust you. But God wants us to trust him. Don't trust in your own ability. Because see, the thing about it is when we trust in our own ability, we don't make God God. We get to the point where we want to e re-event ourselves. And we want to say, well, I got this, you know. I got this. I had this friend years ago, you know, and she was like, I got this. I call the shots. And the sad part about it is she was 29 years old when somebody called the shots on her. So here is where she ought to be 59 today at the age of 29, 30 years ago. Somebody called the shots on her life and her life is no more. We can't get out there and play. And mm -hmm. see, when I got saved, I began to tell her about the goodness of the Lord. I began to tell her, girlfriend, it's time that we come out of the world. Girlfriend, it's time that we come out of the nightclubs. Girlfriend, it's time that we stop doing a lot of things that we used to do. And the last time I spoke to her, the word she said to me was, I call the shots. I got this. And here it is. One night I went to make a telephone call to call her. And all of a sudden at the time, my son was a little baby. And he began to get antsy. And he began to cry. And I dialed six digits. Because at the time, he didn't have to do the 301 and all that others. I called six digits and did not get the last digit. And I did not get the last digit because he going through like, okay, I'll call her tomorrow. Guess what? Tomorrow was too late. When I called her on tomorrow, they told me girlfriend was gone. And I'm like, what do you mean gone? She was dead. Somebody killed her that night. The same time I should have been on the telephone calling her, somebody was taking her life and then they took her roommate's life. And by that time I said, Lord, whatever you have me to do, whatever you tell me to say, I'm going to do it. Because that was a time when the devil allowed a distraction to come. And see, distractions come to take us off of what we're supposed to be doing. And when that distraction came, two lives was lost, y'all. And I had to go through that for years because I felt that if I would have did what I was supposed to have done, they could have still 
been here, but I allowed a distraction. And see, that's what the devil is doing today. He is allowing distractions to come to the people. And they think, okay, if I find it in the toilet paper, I find it in the hand sanitizer, I find it in the mask, I find it in all the food, everything is going to be okay. No, go back to basics. Go back to the cross. Go back to where you first believe. And if you don't believe, Go to the cross. Go and let God have his way. Say, Lord, here I am. He knows where you are, but you say, Lord, here I am. I need you. Because see, all the toilet paper that I have, all the germans that I have, it can't get me no closer to you. Lord, I need you. And he wants us to submit. He wants us to go down up under the water. He wants us to have that anointing. He wants us. He wants us. He said he covers us up under his feathers and under his wings shall you take refuge. There you go again. You're going under. You're going under. Under his wings. Under his wings. And when you think of, when I think about the wings of an eagle, my goodness, those things are huge, y'all. The wings of an eagle are huge. So if the wings of an eagle is so huge. Can you imagine the wings of Almighty God? Could you imagine that he covers all of us, covers all of you, your children, your mama, your daddy, your grandma, your everybody. He covers all of us. He has no respect of person. He just want us to come and he will cover. And as he said, he will cover us in his truth. His truth shall be our shield and our buckler. His truth shall stop all the fiery dots that want to come and want to take us out. It's his truth. It's not my truth. It's not your truth, but it's his truth that's going to protect us. It's his truth that's going to keep us. But we got to get into his truth. And it's his truth, the buckler, when we take it, gird our waist with the truth and with the breastplate of righteousness. We got to take on the shield of faith. We get his truth, get his word word on it. And when we get his word on it, it said, we shall not be afraid of the terror by night. If you're not afraid of the terror by night, guess what? You're going to sleep in peace. You're going to rest in him because that's what he wants us to do. He wants us to rest in him. No other arrow that flies by day. So he have covered our day. He have covered our night. He have covered every basis. He have covered everything. No of the pestilence that walks in the darkness. No of the destruction that lies at noonday. Destruction is everywhere we are right now. This thing started in China. But guess what? China is miles away from us. And all of a sudden, it came all the way to your door. All the way to my door. It it came to over 130 plus countries. That's a whole lot of territory. And God wants us to stop the fear. But starve your fear, but feed your faith. And that's what we got to do. It says that a thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand. But it will not come near you. We got to take the Lord at his word. And when we do Psalms 91, Psalms 91 is a promise from God. And God said in his word that his word, his word would not be turned into him void, but it would accomplish what he has sent it forth to do. And when you, we just begin to cover ourselves with the word of God, it says, because you have made the Lord your refuge, you have made the Lord, you, not me, not the mom and them, Mama, them can't do it for you. You got to do this thing for yourself. We got to make the Lord our refuge. We got to make the Lord our hiding place. It says when we do, because we have made the Lord who is our refuge, even the most high, our dwelling place, no evil shall befall you. This coronavirus, that thing is evil. It says no evil shall befall you. Nor shall any plague come nigh your dwelling. See, we talked about the plagues when we first got started. It the plagues, that thing, it's not going to come nigh your dwelling because you have whatsoever you say. And when you say it's not coming nigh my dwelling, believe that you may receive what the Spirit of the Lord is saying in this day. So therefore, he will give his angels charge over you. Come on, y'all, that's good news to me. He will give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Are your ways righteous? Are your ways like the Lord? Are your ways pleasing unto the Lord? Ask yourself that and if it's not just get it together 
This is our time. This is our hour to be revived, to be restored. This is our time. Because see, it says that we would tread upon a lion and a cobra and the young lion and the serpent. You're trampled underfoot. You think about a serpent. The second you get near him, he bites you. But guess what? If you are in the Lord, if you are his child, just don't go looking for a serpent because I said it. But the thing about it is when that demon come, you can speak to it just like Jesus spoke to the wind and the waves. They had to obey him. He said his word is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He changes not. So therefore, we can still speak to this virus, not near my dwelling. But when we do it, we got to stand in faith. I can't be, well, I can't be in fear. I got to be full of faith. I got to be locked and loaded in my faith, y'all, when I begin to speak this thing in the name of Jesus. Because it says that when he call upon me, I will answer him. When we call him full of faith, God will answer us. He said he will be with us in trouble. He will deliver us and he will honor us. I'm telling you, trouble has knocked at the door in over 130 countries. We got to get to the point where it says that with long life, he will satisfy you and I and he will show us his salvation. But we got to do the right thing. Spike Lee knew what he was talking about when he said do the right thing. He was prophesying back then all the way to now. Do the right thing. But we don't want to do the right thing. But here it is in the book of Genesis, the 11th chapter. We're going to the beginning, y'all. Genesis 11, 1, it says, this is, a, this is a conversation. And this thing, it says, now the earth had one language and one speech. Verse 2, and it came to pass as they journeyed. See, I'm not reading it all. It was a part that the Holy Spirit had me to take out. Now the earth had one language and one speech. Verse 2, and it came to pass as they journey. Verse three, then they said to one another, come let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. Verse four, and they said, come let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Guess what? These people came together and that's what God wants us to do. They came together and when they came together, they began to come together. It's like, you know what? We want to reach the heavens. We want to see what is up in heaven. So therefore, we want to build something so high that we want to reach heaven. We want to see prematurely what heaven is. But see, God didn't want them there prematurely. So therefore, he watching everything that they're doing. Just like now, he's still watching everything that's going on. So therefore, at the same time, but they're on one accord, y'all. If y'all don't get nothing else, get this. Things happen when we come together on one accord. Things happen when we get unified. You become locked together when you're unified. You get locked together. And when you get locked together, there's things that you can do. We can help one another. But then all of a sudden... Verse five, but the Lord came down to see. He had already saw what they were doing, but then he came down. And see, that's God is already watching everything that's taking place. God came down to see the tower which the sons of men had built. We are the sons of men. We're still building things. We're still destroying things because we don't have the right perspective. And we still try to do our own thing. And the Bible, it just really blows my mind because see, although it was written over 2,000 years ago, it's still prevalent for what is going on 2,000 years later. And I tell you, it's just like, wow. And you know, and I still get that wow factor. I've read the Bible over and over and over again, but I still get the wow factor factor because there's still new revelation that is in his word for the times and the seasons are when we are living in. So here it is. He came down to see. And then this is it. The Lord said, God is always speaking, but are we always listening? Indeed, the people are one and they have one language. And this is what they begin to do. Now, nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. See, when we come together as one, there is nothing can, we can do that God, you know, that he won't. If we do the right thing, there's nothing that we cannot do when we come together unified. There is power in unity, but we don't want to become unified. If we become
become unified in all this stuff that's going on and taking place in the earth, guess what? We can defeat this instead of this thing defeating us. So we've got to learn how to be more than conquerors, not just a conqueror, but more than conquerors, more than an overcomer. Because see, I can just say I'm going to overcome this. But when you become more than that, that means it don't matter what that thing is. I'm going to jump over that hurdle. I'm going to jump over that thing. And that thing isn't going to sit and rest on me. Because see, that's what happens in situations like this. Some people watch TV, watch the news all day, all night long. And that thing gets in their spirit. And what they don't understand is it takes that fear and it brings the fear higher and higher and it consumes them and they sitting up there some of them by this time need to probably be in a straight jacket because it's like they've been consumed but we got it all consuming God we get to be consumed with him get to be consumed with almighty God and we don't have to worry about the cares and the pressures of this world because we begin to get consumed with him because he's speaking and he is talking he wants us to listen to what he is saying at this time. So therefore the Lord began to scatter the people all abroad from over the face of the earth and they ceased from building. And when the people got scattered and they began to have a different language, that's when people begin to, well, I can talk about you because you don't know what I'm saying. I can talk about you because you don't know what I'm saying. And that's why when you today find somebody, when they're bilingual and they go to get a job, if they're bilingual and they put on their job application that they're bilingual, bet your bottom dollar they're going to make more money than you. Because here it is, they can speak dual language. And when you can speak dual language, it lets you know that you have something that somebody else needs. And when you have something that somebody else needs, you've been promoted. And when we get to the point where we allow the Holy Spirit to use us, and because we got something that somebody else needs, God will promote us in due time. If God has given you the, you know, well, first of all, I'm going to tell you this, as a born again believer, each and every one of us should be a distribution center. And when I say a distribution center, which is we should be a blessing to one another, not just the body of Christ, but a blessing to others. Christians need to be known by their love. But you got so many Christians who walk. Mm, no, that's not the way God wants us to be. He wants us to always, no matter what the test, no matter what is going on, we got to have joy. There's this joy that I have. The world did not give it to me and the world surely cannot take it away. God gave it to me. Did I always have it? No, because before I became a Christian, the cares of life had me so bogged down to some days. It was like, no, I just did not want to get up, but I get up today. When I get up, I got an expectation that comes nowhere but from the Lord. Glory to God. And because I had that, guess what? The devil don't like me and I don't like him either. But I thank God that he said many are chosen, but few are, many are called. Please forgive me. Many are called, but few are chosen. But see, the thing about it is God calls all of us. Just like these who he scattered, they were called, but they decide to do their own thing. And when you do your own thing away from the will of God, you're going to walk away in all this anger and all this jealousy and all this bitterness and all this malice and all this strife. But God wants to restore you back to him. And when he restore us, all that old stuff is washed away because old things have passed away. Behold, all things become anew. And when the newness of life comes into your life, my goodness, it don't matter what they say because people are always going to remember you for when. But see, then when they keep seeing you that know that you have not changed, they're going to say, mm, something different about you. Yes, I am a child of God, loving the Lord thy God with all my heart, my mind, my soul, my strength. No matter what you do, how you do it to me, I love you. No matter what you said about me 20 minutes ago that was derogatory, I love you. Because the thing that I've come to understand and I realize, the Lord told me vengeance is mine. I'm going to repay. Guess what? You can bite me. You can kick me. You can throw stones all day long. But you know what? When you do those things, this is a thing. They talk about karma. Boom! 
boom, that thing comes back around. You better bet it. It comes back around. Because see, when we in Christ, we ain't got to worry about getting back at you. No, we don't have to work. When you take your hands up because you have been submerged and gone up under the water, the Holy Spirit is all up over you because it's the Holy Spirit that you realize that's keeping you alive and not you yourself. Things begin to happen. And when things begin to happen, the shackles that was once on your feet take off them shackles and all of a sudden I'm free. My God, my God, when you get free, it is nothing that you can't do. When you get free, God is right there on the scene. Yes, the trials, the tests, and the tribulations are going to come because he said in his word, many, many, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but... Glory to God, the Lord delivers them out of them all. I don't know about you. It didn't say he delivered you out of some. He said he delivered you out of them all. All means all to me. It don't mean maybe, no, all is all. You know, we have to take him at his word. All means all to me. Glory to God. And that's what the Lord does. And then in Genesis 18 and 17, and the Lord said, once again, there he goes talking. And the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham? Ask yourself right now, Lord, shall you hide from me? Shall you hide from me? I don't want God to hide from me. I want to pray, and when I pray, and when I call on the Lord, I want God to be right there. I don't want the Lord to hide from me no way whatsoever. He says, shall I hide from Abraham what I'm doing? Since Abraham shall surely become a mighty, a great mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Verse 19, for I have known him, and in order that he may command his children and his household after him, the way of the Lord, to do righteousness and justice that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has spoken to him. Let me tell you something. It says his children and those after him, we are the righteousness of God. We are the seed of Abraham. God for years have been trying to get us right. For years, God has commanded the blessings upon us, but we still want to do our own thing. And God said, time out for foolishness. And see, one thing about Abraham, Abraham became an intercessor because see, this here was Abraham was interceding for his nephew. Nephew Lot. But the thing is, when the Lot left, the Lord told Lot, to, he told Abraham, get away from your country, get away from your family, get away to a place where I will send you. Abraham walked away on blind faith, but Abraham took Lot. The Lord never told Abraham to take Lot, but he took Lot. And Lot went out there and they found out, well, my cattle and your cattle and our herdsmen, they're fighting, they're feuding. When you're not where you're supposed to be, things will not go right. There will be fighting, there will be feuding, but strife and malice and confusion, that is not of God. And the devil is going to do whatever he can to kill, steal, and destroy. But Abraham loved Lot enough. He said, you take this one, I take that. Whatever place you want, I'm going to stay behind for this one. So when Lot left, Lot went to Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah, verse 20 says, and the Lord said, because of the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah, that is great. And because their sin is very grave. When you think about grave, you think about I'm going to the cemetery. Somebody had just died. Sodom and Gomorrah was no more. Why? Because their sin was great. Here it is today. We're at a time where the people's sin is on a rampage and they believe I don't need God. I can do it my way because Burger King said, have it your way and everybody want to have it their way. It's time out for foolishness. And verse 21 says, the Lord said, I will go down now and see whether they have done all together according to the outcry against it that have come to me. And if not, I will know. See, once again, God keeps coming down. God keeps showing himself. But what are we doing when he keeps showing himself? We got to stop turning our backs on what God wants to do. But all of a sudden, when we really, 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 really get in trouble, Lord God, I need you. No, you needed him 
when there was no trouble. You needed him when there was no storm. Because see, let the truth be told, when you got up in the morning, you didn't get up because of your alarm clock. You didn't get up because somebody tap, tap, tap. You know, guess what? Dead people, people are still tap, tap, tapping them and they're not here anymore. We got to get to the point when you wake up in the morning, your two eyes, your two ears, your two feet. But anyway, when you wake up, because everybody don't have eyes and ears. But when you wake up, guess what? It's still the Lord that has done that. Why? Because he has need of you. Why? Because your time is not here. Why? Because you may be a backslider and need to come back to the Lord. Why? Because you may need to repent because there's some unforgiveness in your heart and there's some things that the Lord wants you to get right. Why? He is giving you another opportunity. And see, he keeps coming at us. Why? Because he has need of you and our glory to God. And because God has need of us, he, just like he told Joshua when Moses could no longer perform his assignment, he told Joshua, be of good carriage, but let your hands be strong. Be not afraid because just like I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you. Just like he was with Moses, just like he was with Abraham, just like he was with Sarah, just like he was with Daniel in the lion's den and he was with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Guess what? He's still here today. He hasn't changed. He has just been giving us the Holy Spirit that dwells in us richly. But are you allowing him to dwell? You have to ask yourself, are you allowing him to dwell? So God wants to revive us. God wants the revival to hit the land. And the revival starts with you. It starts in your household. Things happen when people begin to pray. First Thessalonians said, men ought to always pray without ceasing. But if you only pray when something hits your household, guess what? No, you're not strong. You're weak. But see, the word of God said that when I'm weak, I'm strong in him. Why is it that I'm strong? Because I've been praying all along. Because I've been praying before the storms and the trials of life got here. So when they come all of a sudden, it's like I'm already prayed up. And because I'm prayed up, I can then go by glory to God. I can begin to strengthen the brethren. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I'm doing today. I come to encourage. I come to strengthen. I come to tell you that don't. Allow the cares of the world to overtake you. If you're watching the news all day and every day to see what's going on, turn it off. Because see, one thing about the TV, it's called a TV for a reason. Because it keeps telling somebody else's vision. And if it's the wrong vision, and if that vision keeps getting inside of you, and if it's the vision of fear, guess what? You're going to pass that fear on to others. And everybody going to be sitting up there fearing together. And you don't know what's going on. But when you walk out in faith, my my God, all of a sudden you can walk and you can do what needs to be done and you can help somebody else. You can be somebody's caretaker. You can be somebody's caregiver without being in fear. And then it can be to the point you can call somebody up and say, I just want to encourage you today. You can get on social media and say, I just want to encourage you today. I just felt like being grateful today. I just want to tell you that I love you and God loves you too with such an everlasting love. Because see, love covers a multitude multitude of sin and that's how we get in this mess because of sin but here it is God wants to revive us but will you come out of your death before death knocks at your door because see when we're not walking into Christ we ain't nothing but dead men walking and the Bible has a scripture that says, can these dead bones live? I believe with all my heart, those dead bones can get up and live. If you're dead, if you're backsliding, if you got unforgiveness, you got strife, you got malice, you got bitterness, you're walking around in anxiety, you're walking around wounded, guess what? You can live. This is your time. This is your hour to say, Lord, I repent of my sins right now. And see, one thing about repentance, repentance is not just to say it, but then go back to where you was. Repentance is to get that thing in your heart. The word that I had in my heart that I not sin against you, Lord. And that's what we got to do. We got to stop sinning. Sin will take you to a place you never want to go and it will keep you longer than you intend on being in. So we got to learn how to walk this thing out. So we got to learn how as an intercessor, we in a prayer warrior, you must learn to lead a holy life. Holy and acceptable unto the Lord, which is your reasonable service. <clears throat> That's what it's all about. We got to learn to be accountable. We have to be servants. 
And we have to know how to pray. My God. And when you pray, pray God's word. Because if you don't pray God's word, you will become prey because the devil is seeking whom he may devour. And if you don't know the word of God, he will come and he will eat you up for breakfast and spit you out for dinner. And you're going to wonder, how in the world did I get here? But when we just get in the word of God, what does God's word say about this thing? And see, intercessors, intercession is not for the intercession. Intercession is not for the intercessor. Intercession is to take that thing out into our world. Take it out and pray for those. So if anybody this evening have a prayer request, make that thing known. Put that thing out there. I will pray with you and pray for you. That's what an intercessor does. An intercessor is a servant. An intercessor is accountable. An intercessor has to have pure love and a pure heart. And if your heart and your mind is not right, guess what? Your living and your prayer will be in vain. So therefore, we got to have that agape love. Because a phileo is, well, whatever the wind blow, ah, you just made me mad, so I don't love you anymore. I just got to walk away from you because, see, I don't love you anymore. But when you have that agape kind of love, it doesn't matter. When that intercessor know that you're going to call them all kind of things, you're going to do anything, guess what? You become on the prayer list, my sister. You become on the prayer list, my brother, because, see, you got the wrong spirit. And because you got the wrong spirit, we're going to pray that the Holy Spirit begin to save you. Begin to save not just you, you in your household so that you can have an extraordinary life. A life that would tell the devil, I don't belong to you anymore. I belong to the Lord. Now. I don't have to criticize people anymore. I don't have to condemn people anymore. I don't have to complain anymore because I have found out I got some muscles, devil. So therefore, I'm exercising my faith. I'm not living in fear anymore because I'm not keep going by somebody else's word or somebody else's his vision, but I'm going by the word of God. I love you too, nephew. Praise God. But we got to go by the word of God. We got to get in his word. We got to dig deep because when we dig deep, it gives you life. He says in his word that you shall live and not die. And we got to get to the point where we will fight a good fight of faith. And we got to be about the father's business. If you're going to call him Lord, Lord means master. When Sarah took and called Abram, Lord, she knew that he was her master. He knew, she knew wherever you go, I'm going to follow you. And that's the way we got to be with God. Lord, wherever you tell me to go, whatever you tell me to do, I'm going to follow you. See, I'm normally not even here on Sunday evenings, but God said to come out here. I could have been sitting down watching TV, somebody else's vision, y'all. Because see, when you got cable, you got hundreds of stations and you can flip all the way through. But guess what? I had to get in this word and I had to study. God, what would you have me to say to the people this evening? How could I encourage them this evening? Because see, so many are watching. And the thing about it is, this ain't funny, y'all, but I'm going to tell you. This is March. March Madness. Guess what? They got some mad folk out there. Because they can't watch the games. There's no March Madness. There's no NBA Madness. There is nothing. If you want to congregate 200 to 500 people, it ain't going to happen, y'all. The CDC and everybody else said, it's not going to happen. This thing is for real. But guess what? If we get in the word of God, when the madness want to come, you get mad and tell the devil, you won't get up out of here. All fear is gone because you have stood on the word of God. You have taken back your mind. You have taken back your house and you're standing on the word of God and God's word is true. Glory to God. So therefore, we got to get to the point that that we know that our lives have purpose and we have destiny. Glory to God. The second Chronicles 742 says, I'm sorry, 7 and 14 says, if my people are who are called by my name, if my people who are called, I am the called, glory to God, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. There is so much wickedness going on. It said, if my people who are called, we are the called, y'all. But some people who are called, mm -mm, I don't want that thing called Jesus. I don't want him. But if you just begin to turn, that's where the repentance comes in. If you begin to ret uh, just return and repent, then 
one humble. I ain't humble. When you cannot humble yourself, you got pride on the throne. And that's what happened to the devil. It's an asshole. Satan fall like lightning. Why? Because he was going to exalt himself. Jesus, who you think you are? I can sing. I can make the people worship and I can do all this stuff. But guess what? Because he thought he was so high and mighty, he had a whole entourage to come down with him. But see, hell was never set up for man. But hell is a place now that they're going to come. And it says in the Bible that they're going to be gnashing the teeth. And there's going to be all kind of things that's going to come and take place but guess what it was never intended for people but because you want to go your own way and want to promote yourself and don't want to listen to the word of god those things will happen and so therefore we got to get to the point where as it says i'm gonna read this again because see we just normally go there and stop but today i'm gonna take it a little further because i'm gonna also go down to verse 15 Second Chronicles 7, 14, and 15. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins. Guess what? That meant if he's going to hear from heaven, he's going to hear what his father says. Because it says in the New Testament, Jesus said, I do nothing except for what my father tell me to do. I say nothing except for what my father tell me to say. So guess what? He's listening and he's watching. You make your bed in hell, he's there. You go to heaven, he's there. He's listening and he's watching. What you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Are you gonna continue to promote yourself? Well, what are you gonna do? He said, I will heal their land. We got over 130 countries in suffering. People are being upset. Why? We've gone to this place. We've gone to that place. We had a good time. But all of a sudden, I can't get back home. I can't go to the grocery store. I can't go on a cruise ship. We make plans, but guess what? The Lord still say, we make plans, but guess what? There's also a day that's coming, just like right now, no matter what plan you have made. <clears throat> It won't be carried out. People have tickets to go on planes, trains, to go here, there, and everywhere, go on a cruise. But guess what? People are saying, not now, my dweller. You can't go. They're going into the cruise ships, and the cruise ships have been quarantined. They try to get into this port. People are like, oh, no, 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 no. You can't come up in here. People are fearful. They're not letting them have business as usual. We are literally becoming prisoners in your own home. What are you going to do? And guess what? <clears throat> I don't have no children, y'all. But those who have children, what are they going to do? Some people don't even like their kids. Their kids get to run and jump and holler and screaming and it's like, ah, what am I going to do? Why isn't the school open? No, this is your time to train them. This is your time to teach them. Train a child the way they should go when they owe they don't depart from. This is your time if you don't do nothing else. Don't just put them in front of the TV. Get them in the Bible. Get them in the Word of God. Discuss what is happening in the world with your children. I can remember right now in my life when I get to thinking about it. I remember as a child the day when Martin Luther King died. I remember going, you know, hearing it in school. We going home. We all frightened. We all scared. And we called a mama at work because my mother was at work and my daddy hadn't come home from work yet. And we all scared, not knowing what's going on. People, I lived in one. Washington, D.C. People tore Washington, D.C. up. They tore the nation's capital up. Why are you going to tear up where you live, people? You don't do that. The very stores that they went to, they decide they were so upset. Why are you going to tear up black-owned business? Why are you going to tear up a white-owned business? Why are you going to tear up the business? First of all, it's not yours. It's a place you need to go. But people get to the point they get super stupid. You don't go tearing up stuff that you need. We need to learn how to build. We need to learn how to build. In the beginning, in Genesis, the children from the Tower of Babel, they learned how to build. And the Lord saw them building as he saw them building. He came down to look because they were on one accord. We need to learn how to build one another up. When you get to the point you get so tired that you can't take what's going on in the world anymore. Some people just want to take and check out. We're not to check out. We're to keep living. We're to keep going. We need to say, Lord, I feel like I want to 
check out and he say, son, daughter, I have need of you. Because if you go to check out, that's not of God. No way. Suicide is straight up from the devil and people are to the point they don't know what to do anymore. They're checking out early, but God never told any of us to check out. He told us to live. He told us to have that mustard seed faith. And if we walk with that mustard seed faith, my God, you're going to live like you ain't never lived before. He said that he's going to bring heaven down to earth. I'm telling you, you don't have to wait for the by and by. If you just begin to live, just begin to seek his face, hear from heaven, he will heal your land and you will begin to live like you ain't never lived before. I'm telling you. But if you don't allow him to heal your land because you want to stay where you are and you like living in fear, you like backsliding, you like gossiping, you like doing all kind of things that God hates, therefore you're not going to live the good life. But when you begin to hate what God hates and love what God loves, guess what? Your land will begin to heal when that virus try to come near your house. Not near my house, devil, because I got a word from the Lord. Not near my children because I got a word from the Lord. Those parents who are at home and their children up and down, up and down, and they don't know what to do, when you get a word from the Lord and you put a word on that thing, I speak peace, peace, peace in the name of Jesus over every parent that got little ones at home and they're going to be at home for the next two, three, four weeks or however high it is. I speak peace over your homes. I speak peace over your babies right now in the name of Jesus that the gates of hell will not prevail, that you won't hurt not their hair or the head because you just can't take it anymore. But you can do all things through Christ which strengthens you. You can love those babies like you ain't never loved them before in your life. You can just love them. You can hug up on them. You can begin to train them. You can begin to teach them. If they, if they, you know, see the world put our kids on rattling and told the parents that they got all this stuff going on. You begin, if you got some oil, anoint your house, anoint your babies, put that oil up on there and you just begin to intercede for your children. You begin to pull down every stronghold in the name of Jesus. You begin to pull down every generational curse. If you see something on your children that your mama did, that your daddy did, that your grandma did, begin to pull that stuff down. Begin to lay hands on them babies. Begin to hug up on them babies. Begin to love up on them babies that you ain't never loved before. But watch God begin to heal your land. But see, it begins with one. When you begin to get to the point, I'm going to take authority. And when one take authority, somebody else see you taking authority. Then we begin to iron shop and iron. We're going to then begin to keep taking authority and keep doing what the Lord wants us to do. And as we keep walking, keep walking and keep doing and keep taking authority, then all of a sudden it will get a little better. Your mind will get a little better. Things will begin to overshadow you and overtake you as they have before because you put your trust in Almighty God. You trust the Lord with your whole heart, with your sons and with your daughters. And it's like, Lord, heal our land. Heal our land. And when you ask the Holy Spirit to heal your land, he's going to heal your land. He's going to heal you that you won't get to the point. Of, I just can't take it anymore. You know, they got that commercial um, with a little bird. It's like, oh, not another day, not another day. Not, and that's how some people are going to be with their children. Oh, not another. I can't take it. Not another day. We can do all things through Christ, which strengthens us. And it got to the point where you got to get to the point. Teach your children. Love your children. And when they go back to school, the teacher's not even going to know what happened to them. Why? Because they have been taught of the Lord and you will see the righteousness that only can come from God. And we got to take the Holy Spirit at his word. We got to learn how to let go and let God. Let go of what your auntie said. Let go of what your granddaddy said. Let go of what your mom and them say that you'll never be and you never do. Let go of all the wise fables and say, Lord, I can't do this task by myself, but I need you. And because I need you, Lord God, come into my heart, come into my life, make my pathway straight. Everything that was crooked, Lord God, make it straight because I need you as never before. And I'm going to love these babies. I'm going to teach these babies. And most of all, Lord God, I'm not going to open up my mouth and say that these babies get on my nerves. I'm going to tell you something. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Children, Lord God, they, people, they are a gift from the Lord. Guess what? What are you going to do with your gifts? I'm going to tell you something. When you get a gift, the first thing you want to do, you want to unwrap it. You want to unwrap it. You want to unfold it. That's what you do with your children. You unwrap, you unfold the nonsense, okay?
okay? And when you see the nonsense, you just begin to just love up on them. Put the butter on them. And when you put the butter on them, you can not just do a dollop. Just keep rubbing and keep rubbing and keep rubbing and keep loving and keep hugging and keep talking. Because see, life and death is in the power of your tongue and you will eat the fruit thereof. And I'll tell anybody, back in the day, I was always saying it, but the Holy Spirit had to get my mouth straight. I was always telling my husband, you make me sick. And guess what? Every time I opened my big mouth, I got sick. I didn't get sick for a day, y'all. I didn't get sick for two days. I got sick for months on end. I could not work. Why? Because I was sick. Did the doctors know what was going on with me? No, they were stuck. They were mystified. I could explain my pain because my pain was great. But the Lord said, take a spirit of shut up. Keep your mouth shut and stop talking so much. Don't worry about what your husband is doing because I got him. It's to the point, I don't worry about no more what my husband is doing because the Holy Spirit got him. Praise God. So therefore, I allow God now to be God. And that's what we got to do. We got to turn away from our wicked ways. We got to lend an ear to the Lord. We got to get to the point that when we begin to pray, God is listening. And when, you know, back in the day, it was like when E.F. Hutton speaks, now, when you speak, let it be the word from the Lord. Let it be, God, I want you to hear my words because my words are speaking life. And that's what we got to do. Allow your words to speak life. And see, just with this virus, allow your words to speak life because life and death is in the power of your tongue. Stop walking in fear and walk in fear faith so therefore the lord says for my ears attentive to prayer made in this place for verse 16 for now i have chosen and sanctified this house guess what that my name may be there forever and my eyes and my heart will be there perpetually i don't know about you perpetual perpetual is everlasting it said the house my body is a house my body houses the holy spirit your body houses the holy spirit and when you house the holy spirit do the right thing okay do the right thing with your heart your mind your words do the right thing so that when you do the right thing you'll actually find out that it's profitable and when we find out profit who don't like profit i like profit so when you understand that it's profitable somebody else may say one thing but when you counterattack that thing against you no weapon formed against you shall prosper every tongue that rises up against you you can't condemn that because it says that that is your inheritance as a child of god when we understand what is available to us we can say one can chase a thousand two can chase ten thousand in the name of of Jesus when we understand it don't matter what is going on around you I just come to encourage you it don't matter what is going on around you God says if you turn away but if you turn away I I don't want to turn away y'all but verse 19 it lets you know he never gave you the blessing now here's the curse but if you turn away and forsake my statutes and my commandments which I have set before you and go serve other gods and worship them. Verse 20, then I will uproot, I will uproot them from my land, which I have given them. And this house, which I have sanctified for my name, I will cast out of my sight. Guess what, y'all? People are being cast out because they have went to serve other gods. They have gone to do their own thing. But God never told us to do our own thing. He said, stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. I don't want to stay there. Stay with me. When we stay with God, God will stay with us. So therefore, when we stay there, my God, my God, stay there. And so therefore... I see it's getting late, but I'm a st I'm a, uh, just got to stay here. I got to finish it out. Hallelujah. And I'm going to read right here. This here, Psalms 1. It talks about the way of the righteous and the end of the ungodly. It says, blessed is the man. I make this thing personal. Blessed is Deborah, who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. See, we talked about that earlier. But... Deborah's delight is in the law of the Lord, 
and in his law, Deborah meditates day and night. Deborah shall be like a tree planted. That's what God wants us to be, planted, hallelujah, planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither. And whatever Deborah does, it shall prosper. Glory to God. The ungodly are not so, but they are like the chafe which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. You know what? When I read this, I have read it. I've posted over both my houses for years. I live by this. But today, it was like, nor sinners in the congregation of the, unrighteous, of the righteous. So often, so many times, just like I started before, carnal-minded Christians, backsliding Christians, Christians who walk in pride, they just go to church, been there, done that. Just to say they went, but nothing about them have changed. And they sit there Sunday after Sunday. That's the only day they give, but they got seven days a week. But that's the only day they go is Sunday. And then they're sitting there watching the clock, wondering what they're going to eat for dinner, wondering when they're going to shut up. But don't you know today, many of them didn't get a chance to go to church. Not because they wanted to or they didn't want to, but many didn't chance, get a chance to go. Because it says that no sinners will sit in the righteous in the congregation of the righteous. And that's where we are. Many sinners, you can't sit there right now. They're not going to allow you in. And the churches that did allow people in, I believe that those came in, <clears throat> not to say they checked their health records, but I'm telling you, if they was not where they wanted to be in God, I don't believe they got them went to church. I believe they stayed in bed and they took a rite of passage. Oh. I ain't want to go no way. Uh, maybe I sit on the web and watch it the day. But see, it made it easy. Because see, if it was easy, everybody would do it. But God doesn't show us easy. Because when Jesus came, he told his disciples, the son of man have no place to lay his head. And sinners, they like being comfortable. They like being comfortable in their mess. It's just like a pig. A pig gets to the point, a pig gets comfortable in his slop. He gets comfortable when he eats the scraps. He gets comfortable in that because that's all he knows. And therefore, because that's all he knows, he enjoys what he knows. But we got to go back to basics. We got to get to the point where when God speaks to us, we got this, Lord, here I am. He shouldn't have to look for you. He know where you are anyway. But he speaks, we should be ready to listen. And here it is. Amos, third chapter. I'm going to go from three to one. I'm sorry, one to three. It talks about the authority of the prophet's message. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel. We can say today, the children of men, the children around the world, hear against the whole family, which I brought you up from the land of Egypt. Egypt was a dry, thirsty place. Egypt was a place of wretchedness. Egypt was a place of uh, pain and suffering. That's where we are today. Egypt, lowly bar, place of pain and suffering. We don't have to stay there. It says, you only have I known all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Guess what? God knows every last one of us, but God said he will punish us. For all of our works of iniquities. We can't play with God. We can't play with other gods. We got to know the true and living God. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes through me but except through the Father. We can't get through him but one way. We can try any way we want. Years ago, my mama didn't wear makeup. She didn't wear she didn't wear uh she didn't wear pants, she didn't do all this stuff. And I thought that if my mom would have died the day tomorrow, she would have made heaven. Yes, she was good. She didn't use profanity. No, she didn't drink alcohol. But guess what? That would not have merited or gave her enough favor to have gone to heaven. But she eventually realized and got a word that she had to accept Christ again because she was a backslider and the pardon of her sins. And she did that. My mother is a powerful warrior. 
She's 80 years old. But I tell you, she's still a powerful warrior of Christ. And so therefore, God is awesome. My dad, he's a warrior. He has, he's suffering with dementia, y'all. But guess what? He's still a warrior in prayer. My God, my God. Things happen when you get the word that you hide in your heart, that you sin not against God. And that's what God wants us to do. It says, can two walk together unless they agree? We got to agree that Jesus is Lord. We can say this, we can do that, but the real nitty gritty is we cannot escape judgment or destruction and we are not immune to judgment or destruction. We must come to terms that obedience is better than sacrifice. In Isaiah 1, 18 and 19, 1 and 19 is one of my favorite scriptures. But we got to go a little deeper, y'all. It says, Isaiah 1, 18 through 19, it says, Come, now let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. They, Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Verse 19, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Verse 20. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. When we don't do what the Lord wants us to do, y'all, he's telling us, he's giving us warning. It's time to repent and stop being corrupt. It's time to turn away from your wicked ways and allow the Lord to be Lord. Because he said, if you refuse and if you rebel, you will be devoured. That ain't my word, that's God's word. He said, you will be devoured. Why be devoured if you don't have to? We have a choice every day. So we got to make the right choices, y'all. We got to get in right standing with the Lord. And when we get into right standing with God, it all falls into place. But when we're not in right standing, we want to do our own thing. We want to go our own way. And think that God doesn't have the final say because he does. And when he has the final say, we can experience victory. So therefore, right now, I'm going to hit on Isaiah 26, verses 1 through 4. It says, in that day, this song will be sung in the land of Judah. Judah means praise. It's time for us to begin to praise God. It's time for us to begin to say, Lord, here I am. It's time for us to learn to submit. It says, we have a strong city. God will appoint salvation for walls and bulwarks. Open the gates. Open the gates. Keep the righteous nation, which keeps the truth made enter. God wants to open some doors and open some gates. That's the truth, y'all. That's the truth may enter in. But if you have closed up your heart, closed up the gateway, truth ain't coming in. You will be on the throne and truth ain't coming in. And because you want him, it's not going to happen. You will keep him in perfect peace. This is saying what the Lord said. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Didn't tell you to trust in yourself because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever. For in y'all, the Lord is everlasting strength. We got to trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and lay not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. That's what happens when we trust God. So it's time to get away from your own. Because see, the thing is, we want God to forgive us, but we don't want to forgive others. That's twisted. That's wicked. So if God want, if we want God to forgive us, it's because we've repented. But we cannot seek the face of God, have unforgiveness, have strife, have malice. But God... I need you to do this for me. It doesn't happen like that. It doesn't work like that. Truth is truth. The truth will set you free. The truth hurts. And a lot of people isn't going to accept the truth because, see, it hurts so much that the truth will change you. And a lot of people don't want to be changed. They like 
this is just the way I am. No, that's not who you are. That's who you think you are because somebody probably told you that's all you are. Because, see, people can speak of your life and say you're good for nothing. You're going to never have nothing. You're going to never be nothing. No, you're going to be like your mama. You're going to be like your daddy. You're going to be like your father. You're going to be like your granddad. You nah, don't stop listening to that stuff. God said we are joiners. We are peculiar people. We are royal priesthood. When you know who you are, that stuff will be like water off of a duck's back. So this here is James. I'm going to read James 1, 20, 12 to 20. This here is God, loving God under trials. And we got to get to the point where we love God under trials. And when we learn to love him under trials, things will get better. Praise God. And we got to get to the point where we want better. And so here it is, uh, James 1, 12 to 20. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, you know, you go, I want to apply for a loan. Guess what? These bodies are on loan. And God wants to approve us. But he cannot approve us if we're doing our own thing. He cannot approve us when we're not a good witness. He cannot approve us when we know that we are fraudulent. He cannot approve us when we're backstabbers. He cannot approve us when we are backsliders. We want to be approved. It says, blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow or turning. See, God isn't going to change his mind about you and I. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth. There's that truth again. That we might be a kind of first fruit of his creatures. We are first fruit, but guess what? Fruit. I spoke on the fruit of the spirit for a whole year before I got to 911 with your emergency. See, fruit is that character and that nature of God. It talks about your love. It talks about your long suffering. It talks about your gentleness. It talks about your strength. It talks about you looking and resembling like your heavenly father. And he wants us to be that fruit. He wants not fruits, but that fruit. See, that one character, that exotic stuff. See, it's easy just to be an orange or an apple, but we got to be that 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 exotic, the mangoes, the garvey, the, the, uh, the uh, what is those things? I'm looking at it, the... Anyway, the papayas, we got to be all of that because God wants us to be all of him, all of who he is. But we can't be all of that if we got one foot in the world and the one foot out. We can't be stragglers. We cannot be stragglers. So we got to be who the Lord wants us to be. Glory to God. So therefore, it got to be to the point, don't walk in deception because see, God is not marked. We cannot walk in deception. We can't do it our way and think it's going to be okay. And we got to be that beacon of light so that men may see. I cannot take myself and hide myself under bushel basket. Because if I hide myself under bushel basket, how can someone see my fruit? How can someone see me? So therefore, we got to get to the point. We got to stop playing hide and seek with one another. So therefore, we got to stop playing. Because see, we trying to hide from God, but God knows where we are. So verses 19 says, so then my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, for the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Be a producer. God wants us to produce fruit. He wants us to produce that of our own kind. He wants us to produce after him, after his nature, have that agape love, not having that, uh, that phileo. And you know what? This is in my notes, but it says, what does it profit my brother? This is still James. What does it profit my brother? And if someone says he has faith, but has not works, can faith save him? If a brother or a sister is naked and destitute of daily food, or one says to them, depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you don't give them the thing which are needed for the body, what does it profit? 
That says faith by itself, it does not have works, it's dead. If you got all the toilet paper, you got all the germex, you got all the Piracel, share it. Somebody else need what you have. Be a blessing. Be a delight some way. And stop thinking that your family is the only one that need. No, there are other people have needed, but you become hoarders. We are not to hoard. So I'm going to begin to close out with this. Praise God. But I thank God for each and every one of you that stayed with me this evening. Praise God. First Peter 3 and 8. I'm going to start there. It said, call to blessing. Finally, all of you be of one mind, be of one mind, having compassion one for another. Let me tell you something. Love as brothers, tenderhearted, be courteous, not returning evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, blessing, knowing that you were called to do this, that you may inherit a blessing. For he will love life and sees good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Come on. It took me all this time to get to there. This is where the Lord wanted me to take you. He wants us to be righteous. He wants us to be the righteousness of God. He wants us to fear not because perfect fear casts out. Perfect love casts out all fear. I can't say I love with all my heart, my mind and my soul that I'm living in fear. But if I have fear, I have to cast that thing away. Just like a fisherman, he's fishing, he's casting. We got to learn how to become fisher of men. We got to learn how to cast our cares upon the Lord and leave them there. When we cast them, we begin to get the weight of the world lifted off of us. And some of us are walking in the weight of the world. And when we got the weight of the world on us, we become heavy. And God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of a that sound mind. And that way we got to get the heaviness off of us. And I thank God, I'm not living in heaviness. I'm not living in weightiness. And most importantly, I'm not living in fear. God does not want you to live in fear. He does not want me to live in fear. So I thank God that we going to uproot fear right now. Because we got to learn how to paralyze the strong man. We got to get to the point that God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of love and a sound mind. When we become to know the Lord, the pardon of our sins, it's called reinforcement. We don't have to do this thing by ourselves. We just have to learn how to trust the Lord. And so therefore, when we trust the Lord, we are reinforced to know that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So therefore, I want to read this because this here is destroying disease germs. And so therefore, we need healing. Our land needs healing. We need healing. We need to have our minds healed. We need to learn how to trust the Lord at his word. We need to learn how to say, Lord, here I am. We need to learn how to surrender. We need to learn how to be thankful. We need to learn how to be grateful. And this here is called destroying disease germs. And that's where we are. And the disease germs is coming out of this um, prayer is coming out of Isaiah 53 and 5. It says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace. See, people aren't in peace. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we were healed. So therefore, you can also find the same scripture in the book of Peter. So therefore, it's in the old and it's in the new. Old things have passed away, but hold all things become anew. God wants us to be healed. When you are healed in your mind, you don't have to worry about the coronavirus. Yes, it's there. Yes, it's an enemy. But guess what? When you are the righteousness of God, God will protect you. He will keep you because you are a joint heir. You are a royal priesthood. You are a peculiar people. When you know who you are and you are in right standing with him, God will Keep his hand upon you. And so here is Exodus 15 and 6 says, All thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord, thy God, and will do which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon them. None of these diseases upon them. What he has done in the days of Egypt, he will do today now. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. 
He is the Lord that healeth thee. You don't need no vaccination because by the time the man or the woman creates a vaccination, the havoc will be so great. There probably will not be enough food in the food supply chain. There probably will not be enough water. And here it is, people will be digging graves, just throwing corpse in the grave because here it is, they don't know what else to do. They just have a big old massive grave just throwing corpse in because all of a sudden we don't have time to have a funeral. We don't have time to put up a landmark. We don't have time to do all this. So all of a sudden, it's so massive. And people are just in torment and they're just in fear. But you don't have to do that when you are the righteousness of God. Repent for the day is evil. But repent for the Lord is there. To repent is you have to believe in your heart that first you have to ABCs. You have to accept that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and for mine, and he rose on the third day. Then you must believe that he was resurrected. Then you must confess out your mouth and believe that he is here for you. He loves you with such an everlasting love. He said he will never leave you nor forsake you. And then after you do that, get in the word, get in the word-filled church and get to the point where God, I'm going to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy mind, thy soul, thy strength. No matter what comes or what goes, God, I'm going to seek you. You know how in the day we used to play hide and seek. Well, guess what? Some of y'all are still hiding out. You need to learn how to seek him while he may yet still be found. You have to learn how to seek him for yourself because see, your mama is praying for you. Your daddy is praying for you, but you can't go on your mama prayers. You can't go on your daddy's prayers. You got to come for yourself. And I know some people who think they're going to get on heaven. Well, my mama prayed for me. Yes, my mama prayed for me too, but she prayed me in y'all. She didn't pray me out. She prayed me in and she prayed me in that the the fruit may remain. So I thank God that she prayed me in. And see, once again, I talked about it earlier. It says Psalms 34 and 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. God wants to deliver us. But will you be delivered? Psalms 58 and 18. I say I was gonna go. Lord Jesus, God keeps He said 58 and 18. 18. He has delivered my soul in peace. Glory to God from the battle that was against me. For there were many with me. Guess what? If you reach one, you reach one, I reach one, and we begin to stand together in faith instead of fear, guess what? Corona, you got to go. We can speak to the mountains and the mountain got to be removed. Mark eleven thirty four 34 say, Verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things which he say shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he say. Therefore, I say unto you, whatsoever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. I believe and I receive in the name of Jesus without a shadow of a doubt that the coronavirus will not come near my dwelling. It will not come near your dwelling. It will not attach itself to you or your family in the name of Jesus. I command the blessing upon your life and upon your storehouse in the name of Jesus. I let the blood of Jesus be upon your doorpost and my doorpost in the name of Jesus. Jesus. And I thank God for the power that he has made available to you and I, that here is the power is able to heal the sick in the name of Jesus. We can speak the word and the word will go and do what we want it to do. So Holy Spirit, we speak deliverance and healing upon our lives in the name of Jesus. We let the blood speak that the disappearance of every infirmity in our lives that would even try to attach it to our life, it will fall down and die right now in the name of Jesus. With long life, Lord God, you will satisfy us in the name of Jesus. So we thank you right now in the name of Jesus that healing has been made available for you and for I in the name of Jesus, that the gates of hell will not and shall not prevail upon us. We thank you right now in the name of Jesus that infirmity will not come nigh our dwelling. So we thank you, Lord God, that we speak to this coronavirus, that it goes into the sea of forgetfulness in the name of Jesus, that we take the things that we have put in our minds, that we have put in our hearts, and we take those things, conscious and unconscious, in cooperation with sickness and disease, and we speak to it, and we throw it out right now in the name of Jesus. So we right now against every curse of the spirit of infirmity, 
We curse it right now at the root in the name of Jesus. So we recover all right now in the name of Jesus. So Holy Spirit, we thank you right now that we are the righteousness of God, that no sickness or disease or virus will come not our dwelling place, that we will rest this evening in perfect peace. We will have sweet sleep as we slumber in the precious name of Jesus. So Father, we thank you that every germ that would try to attack us, it dies in the name of Jesus. We don't have to worry about it germinating for six hours. We don't have to worry about being six foot away. We don't have to worry about wearing a mask. We don't have to worry about fear because perfect love casts out all fear and we're standing on faith and we're thanking right now in the name of Jesus. So I thank each and every one of you who have stayed with me all this time. I thank you that Jesus is Jesus. I'm telling you, he is on the throne. He knows everything that's going on. So praise God. Glory to your name. I love you with the love of the Lord. Have a sweet night of slumber in the name of Jesus. I speak peace upon you. Peace upon your family. Speak peace upon your household. Sickness and disease will not come nigh your dwelling in the name of Jesus. The gates of hell will not prevail upon you in the name of Jesus that you are been under the shadow of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, prophetess. Praise God. He has been with me. Holy Spirit, have your way. I am Prophetess Deborah Smith Adams. If you have missed any part of this broadcast, you can go to my YouTube connection, my YouTube channel. I am at Deborah Smith Adams. You can find me on YouTube. <clears throat> and so therefore, let God be God. Let your enemies be scattered. I'm telling you. Sickness, disease, the virus, it's an enemy. Don't feed into the media, but get yourself in the word of God. The word that I have hid in my heart that I not sin against him. We will finish our race. We will finish our course. The blood is over the doorpost and we're going forth. We're pressing towards the prize of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. God said that he will make the desolate places in heaven. Let me tell you, praise God. God is a good God, and he is worthy of all the praise. If you don't know what else to do, I'm telling you, I love to praise God. I love to be just like David, almost dance up out of my clothes. I'm telling you, I love to dance. In the world, I love the club, I love the party, but I'm telling you, now I have a different kind of dance. I got a different kind of party. I'm in a praise party, and I tell you, there ain't nothing like a Holy Ghost party because a Holy Ghost party don't stop. Glory to God. So I thank God that you always get your praise on. When you get in fear, get in faith. Just begin to praise God like you your last breath. And watch what God will do for you. Praise God. Glory to God. I'll be back Thursday at 8 o'clock. I'm on assignment Tuesday morning at 8 o'clock. Actually, I'm on assignment Tuesday morning at 11 o'clock. 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock. I'm on assignment. I tell you, keep me in prayer because my church, we do a seniors ministry and we're cooking and we're serving our seniors. We give them the natural, then we give them the spiritual. We give them spiritual natural, but we reach out to the people in the community. And so therefore, things as we knew would have changed, but I just believe that the gates of hell would not prevail. And we're going to have a hallelujah good time. God bless you all and I'll see you on the other side. God bless you. Have a blessed, safe and a prosperous evening. Good night.